What is up rockers? Welcome back to another Rise of Kingdoms content here and today we have a legendary commander tier list for Rise of Kingdoms. Aren't you excited? We are going to break this down here in this video and as you can see we have various different legends for our commander tier list. These legends are going to be the commander's role, but they're not just limited with these roles, okay? Now, you can always do whatever you want with whatever commander you have. It's all up to you. This is a guide to help you, to navigate you to success. Well, let me know in the comment section below if you like this commander tier list, what you like, what you don't like, and if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn that notification on for daily and regular Rise of Kingdoms content and hit that thumbs up if you find this helpful. All right, let's get on with it. So number one, um, Attila. Majority of you will probably agree that Attila is a quite deadly commander. We've seen reports on it already on Facebook. We've seen reports on um, on, our, on our video where we have to counter Attila. And we specifically made a counter Attila video because that's how good Attila is. But in Rise of Kingdoms, you can always, always counter a commander. There is no one commander better than everybody else, right? There is always a counter. Now, Attila is here really because how deadly he is. He can inflict so much damage and also he can reduce active skill damage, which is really hurting a lot of the commanders in Rise of Kingdoms because there are many commanders in Rise of Kingdoms which we rely on, which are high DPS active skill damage commanders. Now, what's really unique with Attila is that if you look into his fourth skill, the Battle of Katalawinian Plains. It's quite deadly because he can get a 100% bonus damage. And it has a 25% chance to increase that. So, it's pretty, pretty dope in my opinion. Um, he is also going to be immune to silence effect against enemy troops with less than 50% strength. So... I feel like it's just too OP and also with the attack tree with Attila, a cavalry with attack tree and that's the first time we're seeing that in Rise of Kingdoms. That really what solidify Attila to be a deadly commander in Rise of Kingdoms. So Yi Song Ye, um, YSG. So one of my favorite commander and one of the first legendary commander that I have maxed out in my account. Um, YSG will always be on the top tier list. I don't think YSG will ever be out of commission unless they make another circular AOV commander and stronger than YSG, but I don't think that's going to happen. YSG is so unique that he is the only commander that has a circular AOE targeting five commanders that are his opponent. So in addition to that, YSG is like a anti-swarm commander so if you're sending up rallies and you have ysg there it's just no one's gonna mess with that because they're going to get hit big time on the side and there's gonna be a lot of casualty in addition to that ysg also can defend he can defend structures for you know flags a fortress and pass and even your city and that's what makes him amazing and very versatile. And you can even use him for barbarians if you want to do some barbarian chains. So Yi Song Ye, definitely an S commander with his uh, versatility and uniqueness. Really, really strong. Uh, nobody want to mess with this guy, right? And he is my favorite, so not biased at all. <laughs> so Genghis Khan, a really great commander. I'm just going to simplify this low active skill requirement for rage. He has a um, rage engine as well. He is going to be able to regenerate rage. And um, he is also going to reduce the requirement of rage for his active skill. So very unique. We've used Genghis Khan a lot, especially in Season 2. And Ark of Osiris as well. And also in Canyon. So Genghis Khan is one of my regrettable commanders that I didn't max out. 
because of his abilities. And I wish I did. So Edward of Woodstock, we've been using Edward of Woodstock for quite some time now. And um, we have some battle testing. We have some battle reports on how deadly Edward is. He really counters the infantry. And that changed everything for the archers. Now, back then with YSG and El Cid, we weren't able to defeat infantries. But now with Edward as a primary commander, it's possible. That's one of the reasons why Edward is there. Because of his ability, high damage ability, he is there. Now, Guan Yu... Very, very deadly commander as well. Uh, he has a fan-shaped area. First time we are seeing in the legendary commander uh, for infantries. Uh, he will have a fan-shaped area and also silence the opponent for three seconds. So, ah, my goodness. Guan Yu as a primary commander has a high direct damage factor. And, and it's just going to be very scary to see Guan Yu in the battlefield. And um, you will see how the, how good Guan Yu is in the battlefield. Um, when he is paired with a commander that has a shield, and if you have the coin on the blacksmith item, you're going to increase his active skill damage by 15% for three seconds. Um, Richard, you know, I don't think a lot of people would have me on debate here. Richard, deadly commander. Uh, it's really good to have Richard into your march, into your investment. Uh, tanky, you can use him with Pretty much anything you want. Um, really good at defending. Um, Alexander the Great here. Um, Alexander really is just good for open field and for rallies. Now his attack tree is what really defined Alexander to be really good. And um, you can even pair Alexander with YSG or even Alexander and Richard or Alexander and Martel. If you're trying to counter Attila, you can do that combination with the infantry. Alexander, Richard, Alexander, Martel. That's one way. And we have a video for it. So make sure to check out how to stop Attila in our video list. Um, so Alexander, don't use Alexander for defending. It's not going to work out well, but he is quite deadly on a rally. And um, that's why I'm investing on Alexander next so that I can do a infantry march rally with Alexander and YSG if I'm rallying a structure or I can even do a Alexander and Richard. But if I am getting swarmed, I'm most likely going to be using YSG. So if I know we're going to get swarmed, I'm definitely going to be using YSG as the secondary for that. Now, in the tier A, uh, we have Wu Tian, and um, I have Wu Tian maxed out as well. We didn't put Wu Tian as an S rank because I just think S rank should have, you know, capability to be in the open field battle and um, be quite useful that way. So Wu Jitian, uh, you know, you can't really use Wu Jitian in the open field battle. She is going to be a primarily, you know, structural defense. A very, very good commander. I think one of the best defenders in Rise of Kingdoms. Uh, definitely worth it to have. So next is Saladin. Saladin counters um, Richard, right? So with that healing reduction of Saladin can counter any healer which what makes him quite unique in the battlefield. And um, not just that, he also has some marching speed reduction and damage factor of a 1400. So he has a really, really good use for cavalry. But um, in my opinion, I don't see him as an S tier. I feel like Khan is way better than Saladin. And in my experience also for what I have seen. But definitely a great investment still. Saladin, you know, if there are, you know, defending like with Richard, you definitely want to use a Saladin as a secondary to Khan probably. So Tommy Riss, a uh, really great commander here. Uh, poison stack, right? That's the key word for Tommy Riss. Um, I actually just rallied somebody today and over 300,000 skill damage we've inflicted to the city that we raided. What's great with Tomiris is that finally with the Archer Commanders, I have a Conquering Commander. So I can raid City using Tomiris. And what's great about her also is that she has a debuff towards Cavalry Commanders. All right. So Takeda Shingen. I, I have Takeda. I played the wheel for Takeda. A great pair for Attila. And um, you've seen like the battle reports of it. Very deadly. With the Fierce as the Fire... It's just so, the combination of his skill is just so nice. 
Now, we're not here to break things down each commander. We're just here to kind of explain why each commander is in their rank. Um, the, if you want to have a breakdown of the commander, go search each commander's name in the YouTube and find the specific commander videos. And we've made a Takeda video already, so make sure to check it out. Leonidas, we've also made a video on Leonidas. Um, a very good commander, but I think Guan Yu is just going to be better than Leonidas. Um, I, I think Leonidas, for being a defensive commander, he's not really going to be able to defend structure because of his fourth skill, it, the Son of the Lion. It says there, while on the map, right? While on the map means he has to be on the open field, not in a structure. So that's kind of a bummer for Leonidas. Now, Charles Martel. Um, this is a very debatable uh, commander because some players love to put Charles Martel on the S tier. And um, I always try to put him one lower than Richard. <laughs> the reason why is because I, for me, in my opinion, I love Richard's capability of healing. Um, what's great with Charles Martel is the counter attack ability. When he's getting swarm, he really benefits out of this because he's able to inflict a greater counter damage. Um, with Richard, you know, there's use for Richard, especially in Ark of Osiris. He is going to be very useful there when there's no casualties a lot. There's no actual deaths in, um, you know, in the Ark of Osiris. Um, definitely, I'm not saying that Charles Martel is weak. What I'm saying here is that Richard has more use, more all-around um, versatility than Charles Martel. So what you can really do is, you know, Richard and Charles Martel pretty much go hand-in-hand. -hand, great combination. Um, if Charles Martel had some little bit of a healing there, I would have loved it. Definitely put it in S tier. And um, in addition to that, with like Charles Martel's shield, it doesn't really stack with Alexander. So that's kind of a bummer too. So for B tier, um, we have Tao Tao, Frederick, Constantine, Hannibal, Mehmed, and Athel Fled. So just to kind of summarize it here, Tao Tao, we've lowered Tao Tao out um, because of new legendary commanders for cabs really push Chow Tao down. Great combination still you can do Genghis Khan and Tao Tao. Um, Frederick, I think because of, you know, there's not a lot of versatility using Frederick, he is going to be on B tier. Um, still great in open field. And um, we have some Frederick video, make sure to check it out. He is still very, very strong and very useful, especially in like canyons and stuff. Um, Constantine, great defender still. Um, but we don't really get to see a whole lot of Constantine in the battlefield. I wish I would see more Constantine. But I think with the Attila and Takeda, definitely we've seen some battle reports where Constantine was able to put some breaks on them. So Constantine, um, I think it's still a great commander. Um, it really depends on your approach. For me, in my opinion, I think Constantine is just a B tier and some players who invested on Constantine would probably love to see him at least an A tier. But let me know in the comment section below, right? Um, Hannibal Barca, I think one of those investments that you get from season one that is actually very useful in the beginning. Uh, but as we progress into the game, Hannibal becomes less relevant as it, it goes on. Um, I have Hannibal Barca, and um, I don't really use him a whole lot. I use him for, I guess, for debuffing now. For for if there is a rally going at us, and I would need a debuffer, I do send Hannibal Barca. So for Mehmed, um, I put him as a B tier. I know there are you know a few players in here that love to see Mehmed at a higher tier. Well, the reason why I put Mehmed in the beat here is that because there's so many great commanders above him and just gonna dominate him um i'm not saying that mehmet is useless but mehmet is so great still because he has an aoe forward facing fan shape area and he can hit five maximum targets and not just that you know he also has a skill damage bonus to 20 percent and increasing the attack bonus as well for his troops um definitely mehmet is a very useful commander you can definitely use him for um you know, for the canyons and stuff, very helpful. Uh, just remember for this tier list, this is also based on my experience and based on what I have seen. Um, in my encounter since KVK 1, 2, and 3 right now, there's really, I don't really get to see a whole lot of Mehmed. So Aethelflaed, um, Aethelflaed. Now, 
a lot of you guys may say, oh, free legendary commander should be a probably A tier, not an S tier. Now, the reason why I put Aetherfled as a B tier is because, like I said, there's just so many new great commanders. Like, I can't match up. I can't find a good reason to put Aetherfled the same greatness as a Wu Zetian, right? They're totally different. And I think Aetherfled is really amazing. I have Aetherfled. I have her maxed out. Um, you can use Aetherfled for Sunset Canyon, great for debuffing, and also um, you can use Aetherfled as a primary commander. I've seen this, and um, she's very useful. Uh, also for Barbarians, right? And um, one of the things I want to mention as well with Aetherfled is that she is free, right? So definitely something that you can max out easily out of the, all the Legendary Commanders. All right, for El Cid, we really brought El Cid down big time with the new commanders that we had. Getting Edward and Tamirith, El Cid becomes meh, right? Back then, we can't even defeat uh, Infantry March, so El Cid is going to stay on C. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with El Cid, to be honest, with my marches. So that's a dilemma for me right now. Um, yeah, we'll see what's going to happen with um, my approach. Um, Julius Caesar, I've never really liked Julius Caesar. I know there are some players that would die for Julius Caesar. Um, Julius Caesar, I just think he just get overlap with a lot of commanders in there. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think he is really that good. Um, I, I feel like he is m more of a like uh, like a super epic in my opinion. All right. Minamoto, one of the easiest commander that you can max out by purchasing. But at the later stages of the game, Minamoto kind of like get forgotten. There's not a whole lot of players really that use Minamoto anymore. Um, especially when you are doing rallies, you'll still see Minamoto on the open field because players have invested on him. He's still useful, but in the big play, I don't think Minamoto is up there anymore. All right. Um, Charlemagne, okay. So I wanted to put Charlemagne into the D rank, but we didn't do that one uh, because some player told me that, you know, at least put Charlemagne up to C. So we put Charlemagne up to C, but nobody really invests in Charlemagne. Uh, as we saw it after season one, it's really not a whole lot. It's a season one commander. It's not a whole lot of players that really invest in Charlemagne. We don't really see him. There's really no use for him for Charlemagne, really. Um, we have three of the D tier here. So the last one, you can't see it, but these are D tier. Um, we got Sundio, Cleopatra, and Ishida. These are Gatherer Commanders, right? So I'll just leave it to that. I do want to say that I'm going to be creating a Ishida video. So Mr. Mopman will have his own video. Um, and um, I'll break it down over there and how he can actually be um, good use for you. Uh, remember that this new Commander Ishida, he is going to be out in the tavern. And um, he has, has some interesting skills, but we yet still need to see and test Ishida. But for now, he's going to stay as a gatherer. All right. Um, uh, hopefully, this whole video was actually helpful to you. Uh, let me know what you think. I know there are players that are not going to like our tier list, and that's just normal because we can't please every single one of you guys. You guys have your own strategy, right? You guys have your own likingness on each commander, and um, I can't please every single one of you. Some of you may like the tier list, some of you guys may hate it, and um, it's it's just something that I can't I can't I can't make you guys all like what I do. But I gotta do what I gotta do. This is it. And um, if you find I'd say eighty percent or eighty five percent here that you like, I'd say it's a success. Um. But I think about 90%, I think 90% of you guys would really find this to be very accurate and very useful. Um, and um, like I said, this is a version 1.0. So in the future, as we get more new commanders, we see some changes. If they nerf a commander, we'll definitely have to adjust some things in here and get a version 2.0. Um, there will also be a video coming out as well for the Epic Commander tier list. So make sure you are subscribed to this channel and you have your notification turned on as well so that you won't miss out on that one. So anyway, let me know in the comment section below what you're thinking. And um, I will see you again later, rockers. Bye.
So I just want to do a quick thanks to ROK World. Uh, make sure to follow him on Facebook and um, you can check this website out where you can see the infographics here at rok.guide slash tier dash list. I will also be posting the infographics on our Discord. So if you want, make sure to join our Discord as well. Links are all down in the description below.